right, we're finally painting something again. Uh, this time around we're doing the engine, which I have already treated to a bit of a, uh, of a base coat of uh, Alclad 2 Grey Filler Primer. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and that went on really nicely. Um, two or three coats of this. Um, it looks, it looks good, great, covered, beautiful. Uh, it also shows up any flaws in the, um, in, the, in, the, in, the in the build. And I think we may have gotten away with it this time. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start. I'm going to be painting it with um, uh, this stuff, Mr. Metal Color. Hey, what was it? Aluminium. Um, I would use Alclad, but I don't have this color at the moment. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it's a similar process. It's a um, it's a lacquer. It goes on quick. Goes on really smooth. Goes on really easy. Um, dries quickly as well. Which is good because I hate waiting around for paint. Um, you know, as I've said before, I have a bit of a crazy quick work in, working. Uh, well, listen, not, not crazy quick. I'm just impatient. Uh, I'd use some of this stuff, but it's a bit fragile, and it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't get good results with it most of the time. It sort of beads, and I'm still still working to get that under control. Anyway, I'm going to start with coating it with aluminium. Um, I'll leave that to sit for a bit. Then I'll use a bit of hairspray uh, before we go on to the next part, which is going to be a uh, darkish grey. Um, turns out that these things aren't that wonderful blue-grey you see in museums or in restored aircraft. They tend to, they, the originals were a, um, what a dark, coolish grey. Um, I've got um, these two. They're, they're, um, I don't know, this one. This, that's what I'm going to use, base grey. Correct RAL number is apparently FS or wait, not RAL number. Federal standard number is apparently 36081. Uh, well, we'll see. I, I might, I might do a bit of both somehow. Don't know. I, I always say this, but I always end up not doing either. So right, let's get some silver uh, aluminium on here and uh, take it from there.
that's that. Uh, I've got different plans for the back here, but bear with me on that. Um, cool. I think there might be a slight reaction with the primer. Zoom in on this. Slight crackle texture. If that's the case, that's just so fantastic, but let's see, see what happens. I mean, things may have been going too smoothly. This stuff is pretty hot. In other words, it is... It can be prone to um, reacting with the, the, the materials below. Let me um, see what happens if I just put a little dab of... Uh, uh, a little, little dust of leveling thinners over it. Let's see what happens. Just to, just have to see what happens. Let it let it uh, cure for a bit. Let it harden, and we'll take it from there. Uh, one of two things can happen: one, nothing; or two, um, it'll peel clean off the base as soon as it's uh, as soon as I touch it with anything else. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, so yeah. Meanwhile, I'm gonna let this thing dry for a bit and watch some future armor. All right. This has had a moment to dry, and I've also hit it with a little bit of hairspray, because uh, what I want to do is, um, what's it called, chip just around the front there. So I've gone, gone ahead and mixed a little bit of, um, well it's mostly this stuff, no, 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 it's mostly this stuff, base grey, with a drop of this stuff, London Grey and a drop of this stuff, uh, PIU Blue. Um, gives it a nice sort of dark uh, greyish. Chairs jammed in. Uh, dark grey uh, uh, hue there. Should be ample for what I'm doing.
I'm not too worried about overspray because these this engines are going to get quite dirty. Another crankcase would be this color as well, but you're not really going to see that because you can't get your head around it. And there's going to be so much washes and stuff going on over all this that it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's almost pointless to, um, to get too obsessed about it. Here. I'll repaint some of these components by hand later. While that is still vulnerable paint, I'll take advantage of that and um, add some uh, water uh, in a cup and then start scraping at the bell housing. Now a little bit will go a long way here, so I'm not going to go too mad with it. I just need to make sure that there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of life to the front of this engine because there's certain components on here that get replaced often and uh, can uh, can see some wear and tear. Once we get that a significant, significant amount of this here is covered by the propeller hub. Once this is done, I will seal it with some uh, clear glass. And 
that will help uh, protect what I've just done here. Uh, in fact, no, let me scratch that. I will be applying the clear gloss after um, I do some hand painting on this thing. Oh, that should do it. So I don't want to go too crazy with it. I just need to have something there. So there it is. Um, a few nicks and dings here. Because these things would fly through flak and debris and get stuff thrown into the engine from the propeller and technicians would drop spanners and things like that so it's just the odd little scratch and nick and ding just to give it a little bit of interest like that. there we go Should do it. It's just enough on there. Give it some life. Cool. Next up, some brush painting, which I will do over at my other desk. Ready. Let's uh, let's start painting. I'm gonna start with some black components first, which I'll be using. Um, which I'll be using some Vallejo black gray mixed with black, um, just to make sure that it's not not too dark. Uh, so I'm gonna just do a two two to one ratio on this stuff. One one drop of this versus two of this stuff. Two of the black, two ish just to tone the black down a little bit. So the components I'll be painting first are the uh, uh, the uh, uh, covers for the um, rockers, or not the rockers, the, uh, uh, what's it, the uh, Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, the push rod. The push rod covers. Gah! What is wrong with me? Um, let's see if I have a fine enough brush for this. Eh. No, no. I might do what I got. Uh, so, that's two to one on that. And I'll add a little bit of airbrush thinners just to make it a bit more usable. Now, this, as I said, there's a few bits and pieces I'm going to be going back in with um, aluminium just to make sure that it's actually um, the colour it's supposed to be. Yeah, nice, nice darkish grey colour. Uh, so yeah. Watch me screw this up. I'm looking at pictures of these things for so long. I'm practically, um, you know, they're practically memorized color patterns on them. And they're very simple, to be fair.
So as soon as I've got all the uh, these components painted, I'll give it all a gloss coat, which will help protect these bits and also help with the uh, spreading of the wash or washes that will follow. The ignition wires are going to be a sort of a brownie orange color. <clears throat> I'll probably revisit the ignition ring with um, polished steel. And give that some uh, uh, some washes or a wash with a maybe a um, sienna, not a sienna, a uh, sepia. That's close. I've seen some images of them. They they, they come across as. Um, Aluminium, but some of them look like they've been heated. It'll also, lend a bit of interest to the uh, to the engine. The color variation. Well, there's not enough color variation in there, but uh, there's the interest. Whether or not this is all 100% accurate is another story. At the end of the day, though, you're building models for yourself. Which is why I'm not that perturbed about the, uh, the the color of the engine casing. And it um, it's a it's a uh, contested color to say the least, at the best of times. So. lighting a bit more. I'm getting there. You know, these are these are these are tiny engines so painting this stuff is goes goes fairly quickly. The fun bit is in the washes. Because these things get dirty. Radial engines just just leak oil everywhere. Which makes them such an interesting thing to paint. Dab a black out of the out of place there, but it's okay. I've only got two left now. You know what that graininess that the um, surface has after applying that paint, it just doesn't show up. I'm quite, well, I'm quite relieved, but uh, it does, it, all, it, it, it does kind of add to the, uh, the texture, as it were. That, oops. Mm, no matter. 
Cool, that's that's all those done. Now the little placard that's on the side there. If I'm not mistaken, there should still be hairspray over this component as well, so I'll let this dry. And then with a rub of toothpick and water. It should, in theory, come up with silver letters. So yeah, that's quite nice, I reckon. Excellent. Um, on with painting that yeah, painting the, the uh, whoa. damn it, painting the ignition harness. Uh, for that, I will mix some saddle brown with bright orange to get that uh, get that weirdy color. It's almost like an orangey rust. And again, as soon as there's some washes over it, it'll turn it down quite nicely. There's one I tried earlier. I just looked at the time, it's 9 p.m. I thought it was much later than that. Had a very long day. It was a very, it was a fun day. There was uh, there were, there were emergency vehicles um, uh, on display, emergency and police vehicles, um, lots of visitors. So my young lad got to sit in an ambulance and in a couple of uh, <coughs> a couple of fire engines or fire response vehicles, some uh, police vehicles, and loads of fun. The hardest part was getting him out of the damn things. I also had a nice chat with the guys who do speed cameras and uh, if they could do the road out front of my house. Anyway, that aside, I, th I feel this could be a little bit more orange. Yeah, it's fine. Again, it's going to be washes over this. I'm going to get too worried about painting onto the ignition ring because it's going to be um, painted over again anyway. This aluminium is a nice bright aluminium. I've never used it before. I said I was going to use Alclad, but I didn't have any, nor did my local shop have any. Or at least not the, uh, the shade of aluminium I was after. I did have this though, so I went with that. Again, it's going quite, quite swiftly. That needs to stay silver, but I need to redo that. Oh, I also need to paint this little box as well. I've got some leftover grey, which I'll do that with. I 
Oops. Hopefully I'm doing this all justice. I mean, a lot of work went into this little thing. And I hope I'm not disappointing with the way it's being portrayed to you. Uh, should I have done these even these clear cables in black? Don't know. See, there's um Again, there's all sorts of various images of original and restored ones, and some are brown, some of this orangey brown, some are black. Might have a think about it. I'll get this on, see what it looks like. Take it from there. It may again be another case of being um, restored aircraft having having those braided brown covers, but we shall see. Again, heavy washes. Probably take away that that look anyway. I mean, worst comes to worst, we'll just repaint them, right? It's not the end of the world. It's not exactly the hardest task either. that. Zoom in on that. See? It's looking good. He says now. Alright. Alright. Sorry about that. I knocked the camera and switched it off and all that sort of weird stuff. <clears throat> A friend of mine at work calls it Elegant, clumsy elegance. Um, though, in my case, there's probably very little elegance involved. Right, there we go. Cool. <coughs> so, next up is the ignition ring, which I will do with some MIG ammo polished metal. I need to give it a good shake first. I could use some of the Citadel paints, but I find them to be a little bit chunky and a little bit thick for um, for this purpose. They're great for dry brushing though. I'm not going to be doing that just yet. Oh, before I do that, let me just touch up uh, not touch up, you know, just paint this little, yeah, touch up the top of this thing. Get rid of the, uh, focus, get rid of the little black smooch I put there. And this little box down here. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. That's literally just a piece of sprue. Actually, it's actually the, the part of the <coughs> the kit's bomb rack. I just cut a chunk off of, so I was not going to use it. 
no idea what this is, but it's it's in the reference images, so it's getting painted grey. There we go. Alright, now the ignition harness ring thingy bulb. There's a fair amount of um, overspray on it from the um, uh, from painting the uh, the, the, the crankcase. So some polished metal just to snazz it up a bit. I'll use this to sort of touch those little fellas as well. Little connectors between the um, between the cables. Ah, look at that! I forgot some. Got quite a few of them. These need to be done as well. It appears to be slightly darker color than the um, aluminium around it. Grab a different brush for a second, so I can paint these little guys. There we go. So that's that harness done. Some of those cables or tubes and hoses are redone. Groovy. What else needs to be done? Oh yeah, that. I'll tell you what, I'll just give that a bit of a try and give that a bit of a dry brush. Hold on. 
find the right yeah, a little bit of a rag over to that side. Cool. So, I think, no, wait. Just mentioned them a moment ago, I probably forgot about them entirely. The little connectors here, the little ties. There we go. That should do it. There. Are we are we focused? We are not focused. Yeah, there it is. That's what it's sort of looking like at the moment. <coughs> um a wash. Uh, yeah, the rest of it will be washes on, on this side of it. Um, using uh, all manner of stuff, really. But I'm going to let this sit and dry and cure properly. And then hit it with some Alclad Aqua Gloss. So that the, uh, the washes don't stain too much, I suppose. Oh, we'll see. We'll see how that process goes. Anyway, um, get to that in a moment. Okay. Right, we now have um, given this thing, when, when I say we, it's the royal we, obviously. I've given this thing a uh, gloss coat <clears throat> using uh, Alclad Aqua Gloss, just to give it a light sheen. And I've also painted the, uh, the back here uh, matte black to give uh, you know, some darkness and depth to it. Because on the, on the real thing, this this is is not there. It just goes straight through. But in, in this case, I'm gonna I'm just using that to put some shade in there. <clears throat> the the trumpeter kits, uh, is it trumpeter and hobby boss kits, which are new, uh, newer than this, have a, have a far better uh, engine when it comes to the uh, to the kit. Um, the uh, the engine is a little bit more detailed than the kit mo uh, kit one in the, uh, the the Tamiya kit, but also has all the correct or more correct intakes and exhaust pipes. And it has a full exhaust system that comes out the back and at the bottom of the aircraft, whereas this one stops here, uh, goes into a, goes into the front of the aircraft, and then you magically have uh, some exhaust pipes pop out the bottom, uh, which are flat plates. I'm not entirely sure they're even the right size, but I'll worry about that later. <clears throat> anyway, meanwhile, let's uh, start with some some shading on this, which I'll start with um, some Citadel Null Oil. I'll use this on the cylinders uh, to start with. And uh, just let's give these things a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of uh, you know, shade. There's a lot going on here, and they're very bright at the moment. Let me just start out in the back, see what happens. There, it should dry fairly, fairly translucent. It gives a 
gives it some depth but doesn't doesn't ratchet up the contrast. <clears throat> there. I'm feeling human again by the way for the last two days since I since I painted this thing. I've um I've been down for like two days straight. It's the first time I'm feeling human in three days. I'm just going to do these back cylinders and then let this, let this uh, set for all dry for a bit so it'll, uh, you know, so, I don't, so I don't end up ruining the next layer by um, going over the still wet, uh, still wet water. <clears throat> I can do this. Ruining it by going over the still wet uh, washes. Because I want to do wet on wet, but not at this stage. I'm going to do that with some oils and some um, some spatter. It'll be the first time I try that, so we'll see how that works out. Now it's fine to go a little bit heavy with it in places because um, those radial engines were messy, messy things. This is just a basic shade of the um, cylinder heads. <clears throat> <clears throat> I recently had a look at the uh, the engine I did on the uh, uh, Trojan, and it really, really wasn't wasn't my best finest work. It makes such a difference to have a aftermarket engine as well. The uh, Troja's engine at the kit, it looks so basic by comparison. It is a different version of the of the Wasp radial. It's a single uh, single row of cylinders, as opposed to the double one on this aircraft. Um, I'll just show you the difference in a moment. Let's drop a little bit in here. And on the ring.
little bit on the magnetos. Just lifts all that detail out. There we go. So that is basic black wash done. I'm going to let this dry and then move on to some other colours. Um, well, actually, let me just just give it a give these cables a little once over. It doesn't look like anything's happening, especially on this on this camera, and especially if I don't hold it in frame. And there's a little bit of subtle sh shading happening in there. Yeah, let's not do that too often. That'll do for now. And let me show you the difference between this and the one on the Trojan. If you can get it in frame. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Let me move some stuff around over here first. I'm not quite 100% yet, but I'm getting there. Okay, so there's your Trojan. Focus, thank you. And there's the uh, so that's the Roden engine, and that's this, this is the uh, quick boost. See, the uh, cooling fins are a lot denser on this one. And I can see I've sort of missed a spot. Spooge some black wash on the back of the aircraft there. That's what it is. Where was that? I missed it. There we go. Blue. Lots of lots of stuff happening now. Cool. All right, let this dry. Come back later and do some uh, engine grime washes. Well, all right, folks. Here we go. Um, this has now had some time to uh, to cure. Um, at least dry, or however you want to call it, and. Um, uh, next up will be some other shades. Uh, <clears throat> I think I'll start with adding a little bit of sepia to the ignition ring. Um, I've seen in a reference somewhere that the um, the ring itself is a, a slightly discolored, so a little bit of a bit of this won't go amiss. Even if it is just to give it a bit of a, you know, just a bit of a tint. I'll do the same with some of the um, hoses coming off of the magnetos. There we go. 
doesn't do that much, but it just adds a little something. It's all very subtle tones at the moment. It's hard to see under this light, but it is it is there. I don't want to go too too dark with it or too heavy. Uh, I might revisit it later after it's had a chance to dry, put a little second coat on there. <coughs> but for now, that'll do. Uh, so yeah, now, time for some engine grime. Now these things, the radio engines, as I said before, they get quite, quite mm, gunky, quite messy. Let's see if this stuff even still... Oh, yeah, it still functions. It's a bit... Yeah, it's a bit gritty in the corners there, so it'll be quite thin, which is probably for the best. Don't want to overdo things. Now, this is an enamel wash. And what I'm going to do is... Um, see, focus around here. Well, this is really thin. Oh, there we go. A bit of pigment on there. Around there. Probably end up blending this in a bit more than what I'm doing right now. So we're going to zoom in and let's just zoom in but also keep it in frame. I'll whack this on and then once it's dried a bit I will sort of shape it and blend it a bit more with some thinners. That's where the uh, the gloss coat comes in handy. You can be a bit more um, I don't want to say rough, but you can you can more easily manipulate the um, the, the washes that you put on afterwards because it, it, it it's easier to do that on um, on gloss than it is on a matte, because the matte will just soak up the, the pigments and hold them. Which, in it, on a, in its own way, is very helpful, but um, not if you're trying to use it, not you know, if you're trying to manipulate it a bit more, with, with a bit more precision. I mean, it has its own uses, of course, the um, uh, matte pigment uh, and weathering, or oils, but it's uh, it's not always handy. Just gonna give a, give it a bit more around the cylinder heads. Just actually just randomly splodge it on. Favoring the bottom of the engine because that's where gravity would drag all this crud.
what we got here. That's looking nice and grimy. Working out a little bit more. Yeah, that's not too bad. So, this is all, I won't say drying, I suppose I could just add a little bit of a, more there, just, just tap it on in places. I'm give the impression of, you know, leaking seals and leaking um, shafts and whatnot. Now the crankcase on this thing splits horizontally and then you get the bell housing bolted on the front of that. It's a bit tricky to get in there though. Anyway, I don't think you'll ever see in here anyway, but it's a good measure. Yeah, there we go. Once this is all cured or dried, I will um, I'll give it a bit of a um, coat of some uh, dull dull coat for uh, over around the cylinders, and a little bit of um, satin around the uh, the bell housing. I don't think there's that much more to do on this, really. I might just experiment with a couple of other colours. Just to blend things up a bit. What's that? Neutral brown? That's pretty much the same shade. A bit lighter, I might do some of that. Again, another enamel wash. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter, but it uh, has a sort of a fresher oil look to it. I use this one a little bit more sparingly. So for those that don't know, the um, cowl flaps on the Corsair don't go all the way around the engine. That's because early models had the issue that um, oil would leak um, and just spray the canopy, the, the, the windscreen windshield with oil, uh, which is not ideal. Um, so that's why they uh, they uh, they blanked off the top two, I think it is. <clears throat> there. Blank. 
blend some of that back in a moment. Give it a moment to cure to, to dry a little. And what's this? Deep grey. Hmm. This one has an agitator in it. Didn't know that. Is this one? No, this one doesn't. No, this one does. I wonder if I dropped that in there myself. I yeah, can't remember. Yeah, now this is just a... Blend some higher, some colours on the uh, bell housing itself. There, that'll do for now. I'm going to let this um, dry for about 15, 10, 15 minutes and then come back with a brush um, and some uh, enamel thinners and then we'll uh, put... <coughs> excuse me and then we'll um, give it some more um, some blending. So yeah. Back in a moment. Alrighty, let's see what this has done. So we have that seems to still be built in the no, that, that seems alright on this side seems to be. Good. Let's see if we can tease this bit with a little bit of a brushing. Let's see if we can sort of kind of blend this a little bit. This is still a dry, a dry brush. I'm going to try and get the worst of it blend, wicked, blended away. Um, Right, I need to probably need to make this brush a bit moist because it's as I said it's dry now, but yeah, that's better. But this stuff down here is still a bit wet. That's looking quite nice. It's a bit hard to tell with the uh, with the camera zoomed in like this, but it's uh, it's not too bad. Got to remember that it's quite a small part of the aircraft. Right, so we have some enamel thinners and a cloth. Brush might be a bit pointy for this. Let's see what else I've got. Mm, this might work. Brush is a little bit stiff, but it should be okay. I don't want to wipe it out too much. No, it's still a bit moist. I, just want, I can never get this right. It's always uh, the guys. Other guys always make it look so simple. 
Yeah, just make it a little bit moist and it'll work. And they get these perfect blends, but not me for some reason. It's like it knows. Uh, it's pulled around here a bit more than I'd like. Around the uh, around the plate there. Right, while well, that's sort of sitting there, <coughs> let me see what other colours I have. I've got these, um, oops, these streaking brushes. What is this? Cold, dirty grey. Let's see what I can do with this. So, I've got this. What I'm going to do, it's a fairly light colour, so instead of using that brush, I only want a teeny bit, so I just dabbed some on my little palette, and I'm going to take a finer brush, put a few dots. There. Here. What this will do is it'll give it a bit more tonal variation again. Once this has dried a bit more, 
I'll blend this with a uh, with soft brush again and hopefully that'll um, add a bit more interest and depth to this as well. So I'm going to let this, uh, this sit for about, uh, I probably could give it a moment or two. And just clean this brush quickly. I think this stuff, this oil brush and stuff dries relatively swift. Brush for that one, which I had around here somewhere. Ah, nope, nope, wrong, wrong. <coughs> um, brush a brush a kingdom for a brush. There we go. Found it. Oh, come on, focus on something at least, would you? Right. So, twink. It's a bit hard to see, but it is there. Bit of a blending with this. And I might actually do the same with some of the other other colours as well. Yeah, there's nice little scratches right there. Yeah, that's not too bad at all actually. I'm quite pleased with this. Very, very subtle, but it's there. And what other colors have I got? Um, what is this? Green, gray, grime? Um, yeah, no, that's, that's too, that's too green. Um, warm, dirty gray. Whoa, steady on. So, right, so. Got some warm, dirty grey. Which is a, is a interesting dark brownish colour. Brownie grey. Use some of that in and around the area that we just added the, uh, the engine grime. Hopefully you're not going too insane with it. Interesting, these colors are all very similar to each other. there. Um, what is this? Medium brown. Starship grime. Yeah, that's a nice colour. A bit more green. Again, it's, it's quite similar in shade. A little bit darker. So, Mig, if you're watching, these brushes that come with these with these uh, streaking brushes, they're not fantastic.
probably be using some of these colors in the inside of the cowling as well. I say that now, I'll probably completely forget about it. There we go. Now I'm going to let this dry for another 10 minutes and then I can uh, start blending it again. Okay. <clears throat> I wonder how many times I've said okay already. This has had a, a moment to sort of cure and dry. Uh, let's see what we can do with a bit of the blend nosity on here. I don't want to get rid of it entirely, but oops, stay in the focus in the frame. Just want to give it a oops, one half seems to be curing a little bit quicker than the other. It might be the light on this side. Get rid of these hard edges. I'm gonna keep some of the um, some of the grime in there, but not the, not the hard, not too much of the hard edges on there. That's that's nice like that. So like that that's that's quite nice there. It's getting somewhere. Like a good Friday night, it's just about a gentle, gentle teasing and a light stabbing. Are we happy with this? I think so. Now, I'm going to let this dry. And then coat it with some satin. Actually, I've got some of this. is a bit of a brownie color. I think I'll reintroduce some slightly harder edges in there. So slightly randomized. Brushes are terrible. Yeah. The material is nice, but the brushes are just not fantastic. 
So I've blended all that stuff in. I want to bring back some of the like, slightly harder edges in places. So let's see what I can do with. dot as well. already Yeah, it's looking quite interesting. A little, little bit of enamel thinner, just to just to water it down a little bit, so I can get a bit more um more of a painterly effect on it. I say this now, probably would completely ruin it. Let's thin this down just a little bit. Mix the uh, mix the starship grime and regular grime together a bit. Slightly warmer, warmer colour. Nice. Let's see if we can get some streaks done. This stuff is a bit of a wash. Makes up a nasty sort of brownie, brownie grime color. Put that around, around here. I am kind of making some of this up as I go along, folks. I tend to do that. I'm just I, I, there's so much time between builds. I sort of forget um, how I did things. Uh, I've mentioned this before. This is probably going to be a, a, one way to sort of remind myself how to do it, and it's just by videoing it all. So I'm basically just adding some enamel thinners to the uh, to the brush and just mixing up what's what's still on the palette. Yeah, that's quite nice.
There we go. Cool. I'll just use up some of the rest that's on here. So I just add onto the cylinder heads a bit more places. Grime that up a bit more. Now, for some reason, on the camera, it's all a bit warmer than it is in, in to my eye. Might be because the night mode is set in on my phone. Not sure. Anyway, I'm quite happy with that. I will stop here for fear of over-egging the plot a bit more, a bit too much. And, uh, yeah, call this done. Um, next up will be... <coughs> Excuse me. Will be um, a dull coat and a bit of a satin coat in places, and then um, I'll call the engine the front of the engine done because I still need to do this side as well. So yeah, that has been the washes. So yeah, I'm gonna let this dry and then dull coat and then um, yeah, take it from there. Well. I thought I'd use my uh, photo booth that I bought a while ago to show this off now. Uh, I've added a dull coat and just on top of the, um, oops, uh, sort of just on top of the uh, bell housing, there's a bit of a, bit of a satin sheen to it. I've just dusted it with some Alclad uh, um, light sheen coat. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this, um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully the, the other side of it will go and go just as well. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's the, that's the front of the engine done and moving on to the next bit. <laughs> 